Hey, everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. And we've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you. So let's get started. This is episode 103, The Biggest Decor Mistakes and How to Fix Them. Oh, I've got Problem lots to say. Solver. And you know, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like we're very qualified to speak on this because I think about any decor mistake you can make out there, any decorating mistake, we've made the them, The three right? of us have made. That's exactly well, right. Well, the thing is, if you do anything enough, you're going to make mistakes. And how do you learn? From yes. making mistakes. That's right. I'm making and mistakes. I actually was thinking about this the other day when we were discussing like our upcoming topics. And I thought, you know, just like everything else, I have a friend who's a baker and he had on his Instagram, wow, big baking fail. And he had a picture of these scones that just totally failed. And I thought, well, yeah. And and just like that, you know, you don't bake things or make things for the first time and get it perfect. Why would we think any, except making a decorating mistake can be a little more, you know, uh, expensive. Exactly. Well, we're (laughs) going to help you avoid any expensive mistakes or even any inexpensive mistakes. But, you know, if you're not trying, if you're not taking risks and you're not pushing your creativity a little bit, then you're probably playing it too safe and maybe you're not making any mistakes. But Mm -hmm. anybody who's out there and decorating and um, trying some new things and pushing their creative envelope a little bit is certainly going to end up with some batch of bad scones, so to speak, now and again. (laughs) But, you know, I have, uh, we know of a way to absolutely avoid making any mistakes for your window treatments, and that is uh, using Smith & Noble. Uh, Smith & Noble is the sponsor of Decorating Tips and Tricks, and if you go to smithandnoble.com slash DTT, you will receive $300 off any uh, purchase of $1,000 or more. And Making the right choices for your window treatments, whether it be Roman shades or drapes or natural wovens or privacy or all the types of uh, window treatments that Smith & Noble offers, it, there's, it, it's foolproof. There's absolutely no way to make a mistake. They have design consultations, which are free. They have measuring, which is free. They have installation services, and it is guaranteed. So head over to smithandnoble.com slash DTT. Have a look around. If you're ready to purchase, go for it because this is not going to last forever. Uh, Or go to smithandnoble.com slash DTT and order some swatches because that would be something that we were going to suggest, I think, during this episode is to get Mm -hmm. swatches of any fabric. We love swatches. Yeah. And and play Mm -hmm. around with them. I have a pile of Smith & Noble swatches in my house because I have gorgeous Smith & Noble window treatments in my home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we highly recommend them. And um, that would be one thing you will for sure not make, make a mistake with. So getting into today's topic, who wants to kick it off? Yvonne, you want to? Yeah, I will. I certainly will. And um, we're going to, I'm going to kick it off uh, literally from the floor up. And I'm going to talk about your carpeting. I think one of the biggest mistakes a person can make is keeping carpeting longer than they should. Uh, Now, are you talking about all kinds of carpeting, wall to wall and area? So so are you talking about about stuff that's kind of dated looking? Are you talking about that kind of matted where something might be living underneath it? I'm going to lump them all in one big heap. (laughs) <laughs> that okay. should go out the door. You know, if, if you've shampooed it a few times too many, maybe it's time for new carpeting or new or different floors. Um, if it's very dated looking, if you still have shag carpeting, get rid of it. Um, shag carpeting came back for about 10 seconds in the, oh gosh, like late 90s, maybe early 2000s. It's time to get rid of that. Um, yeah, I think that that makes, I mean, we have bedroom carpeting that's way past its prime, but we're, we're just about ready to have all of our um, bedroom and sitting room um, hard uh, hardwood floors put in. But I think that a carpet can really make it, uh, a house look dingy. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, don't forget what you have underfoot and don't cover it up. Either get, get rid of it or try something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. That sounds good. And I did have shag carpeting at that time period. And I 
bought a, um, you know, just some square footage of it and I had it surged. Mm-hmm. And it was really mm-hmm. fun in our family room because a lot of the rest of my what house color was, was pretty it? traditional. Oh, you're going to get me in that. It's autumnal colors again, aren't you? Autumnal colors. It was goldish. Goldish. But it was really fun in the family rooms. And the girls loved to lay on. You could actually even make um, like snow, you know, carpet angels. And so they loved loved it. Yes, I've never heard of carpet angels, but I understand. Well, you know why I know that it came back in in the late 90s, early 2000s? Because during that minute, I got some too. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yes. And I put it in my family room too. Maybe we should call this episode train. "True Confessions," uh, the decorating uh, kind. But I did not keep it long at all. Quickly, I mean, it, it it did feel really soft to sit. You know, my kids were like in middle school or high school, yeah, and um, middle school, and they just loved how it felt. But yeah. I just knew pretty early on that ooh, this was a big faux pas, and it gets old looking faster because matted. Of the oh, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh. But if yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always preferred the Berber because it, one of the things was it, it just held up well long term. It didn't, you know, it wouldn't flatten like the, mm-hmm. the plush mm-hmm. does. That's so it exactly does, that right. really can look, uh, past its prime pretty quickly. So that's a, that's an excellent one. So I wanted can to throw I, one one. An, while we're, oh, go ahead, Anita. Go. I was going to say while we're on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about carpet, I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. The decorating mistake of choosing the wrong size rug. Uh, oh, because rug, it'll go hand in hand. I mean, yep. and mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's just me being a cheapskate, but I can't tell you how many times I've seen, oh, gorgeous rug, gorgeous rug. Oh, I think I need this size. Oh, what? That price? It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm just going to go with the smaller size. I've done this so I many times. I do the times. same thing. Don't, like, I know. Don't do it. Can I just it. get away don't with that? I know. That you come home and, eight, you know? and it looks go like bid. it's a postage bigger, size. Home. There's like a piece of post, you know, it's a postage stamp <laughs> yeah. and you're yeah. trying to put like the front legs of every chair on it. It looks like a beach towel. A beach towel. A beach towel, right? room. <laughs> That's so funny. So, no, but it's so oh. true. And there is a big mm-hmm. difference usually, you know, I mean, you see you, and I love it like when they have it on some of those websites because they give you the price for like the runner and you're like, how could like, two you know, by three, a giant yeah. rug be $39? And then you go into, of course, the one you like <laughs> yeah. is like seven, no, that seven something. that one's nine ninety nine, yeah. yes. right? The one that you like. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so my fix for this is, well, you know, if you haven't bought it yet, just bite the bullet. Get the bigger size. You're not going to be sorry. If you're trying to mm-hmm. decide between sizes, just go that step up. Go the bigger one. But let's say you've already bought it, which I admit I have one. It's gorgeous, but a little Ooh. too small. So I bought a sisal rug inexpensively and put it underneath the the wool rug that was patterned. Which and, is a great and way to go. gorgeous. And, and that, at that the acted end of as the an day. extender, mm-hmm. right? An extender, and it and it could also, if you really, if your budget is really tight, and but you want that, um, either the splash of color or you want the pattern that's going to be in the 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 top rug, then ma- then you can do what Anita's saying, and it's not a mistake. You're doing it purposefully, mm-hmm. but you know you have to get the under rug too, because then they will mm-hmm. act as one unit but together. If you layer rugs and you use a sisal rug under it, that is a gorgeous look. And actually, right. I just and if did we're a talking, post about that, so I'll put it in the show notes. If you're doing hide mm-hmm. rugs, uh, they're hide just made to be layered. Are, oh, so I know oh, under my yes. dining room table, one wasn't enough, two wasn't mm-hmm. enough. I ended up going with three. Uh, oh, you devil. Oh, wow. so, well, you know, you just keep going till it's a willing. Right. I mean, it just yeah. it looks great. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're, right. they're fine. I mean, layering rugs is just a really mm-hmm. great look. So right. don't be and afraid he, of that. And here's another thing. If you love a rug. And you can't, and it doesn't matter. You just can't afford it. Get a smaller one anyway and layer it. Right. It doesn't right. have to be, ooh, you picked the wrong size. Right. Just so that it's not a mistake. And mm-hmm. then, yeah. And then put oh, a I, yeah, beautiful exactly. sisal underneath of it. And, and if you need a mm-hmm. very large rug, you can get several sisal rugs and kind of layer them. Mm-hmm. Or add them, you know, next to each just other. Just make so sure that's they don't okay have too. fringe. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yeah, just just kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, well, exactly. The other thing about the too small of a rug is the the mistake of it is, yes, it looks like a beach towel. And what really happens is you're not creating this designated space or this anchor for your furniture. So mm-hmm. the rug is kind of in the middle and maybe the coffee table sitting on it if it's a family room or a living room. But the other furniture would have to be all scrunched into the center to be touching it. And in in an ideal situation, 
your furniture is well established in sitting on top of it, not just the little legs holding on, you know, by the edge of the wood. (laughs) They're really on there, like a good portion, like Mm -hmm. at least a third of the sofa or a third of the chair. Just a couple splinters of the wood or sitting on the rock. (laughs) I'm holding on for safety. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. So- and and so how do you decide? Okay, you're going to bite the bullet. You want to get the bigger rug. You're going to pay a little bit more. Try to figure it that you have about 18 inches right. around the rug from the end of the rug to the wall. That's walls. a really good point. Go bigger. Mm-hmm. Go that one size mm-hmm. bigger as long as yeah. it's not hitting your walls. Right. You know, right. Uh, y- you'll be so happy that you did. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So I have. You can even move it to a different room that might be. Oh, but then of course you can fix that mistake and say, no, no, I really meant this to be in the hallway. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Exactly. Slide it in there. That's right. And just hold your head high, whatever you do. Exactly. And Mm -hmm. we won't tell anyone. I I have an overarching uh, concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you are, is this the mistake you just made? Excuse me. I thought I heard you say you just made one. No. Oh no. No, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, okay. I mean, this is my overarching okay. idea. She wouldn't tell us. She wouldn't tell yeah. us. Okay, no, yeah. there's some big thing she won't oh, tell us. Oh, let's so go not. Ahead. No, let's not. Let's blow it out of proportion. It's Am I building it? Building something it up I'm going to share okay. with you when you come up with one of your ideas. Maybe. Oh, okay. 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 So, but my overarching idea in how to avoid making a mistake is live in the house first. Ah. Or, and yes. if you're already mm. living in the house undecorate it with what you've got and live with it sort of, you know, without a lot of stuff in it to decide mm. where you want to go next. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this particularly comes into that. play when you are just moving in or just constructing a house, mm-hmm. live in it for a little while. You're going to be, you know, laying in bed, thinking about all these ideas and something's going to seem like a great idea, like knocking that wall down or, <laughs> you know, moving the bathroom over here. But live in the house first and find out how you and the people you share the home with are actually going to use the space. Mm-hmm. And I would say, you know, not like a weekend, you know, I'm talking like Mm -hmm. a couple of months at a minimum, if you can do that. Now, if you're in a home already and you've been in there a long time and you're like, oh, wow, I'm pulling out the shed carpeting and I'm taking this out and I'm changing things up a little bit before you start buying new stuff, get all the old stuff out Mm -hmm. and then see how you want to proceed from there. So that's my kind of umbrella tip. Well, and can how I to avoid add these on mistakes. to your umbrella tip? And it's kind mm-hmm. of light along the lines of what you're talking about is sometimes we have stuff in our house we don't really like, and then we're buying new stuff to go with the old stuff that we mm-hmm. don't like. Oh, isn't so that the truth? So sometimes it's well, time to just start transitioning to a new look, even though the new look and the old look don't really work together. Okay. My tip sort of fits into that, my next mm-hmm. tip, mm-hmm. and that is uh, too much furniture. Oh, I've done that so many times. You know, I'm sort of guilty of that. I love the look of less is best, but I I just love furniture. Right. And I mm-hmm. tend to collect it. And the, this I is why you need a you. barn. <laughs> I don't, you know what? I don't have a barn. Or a, a barn on the property. Antique. Or a booth, yeah, to sell mm-hmm. this. Or well, a booth. we just figure I'm using what my garage, both bays of my garage and my basement that way. Yeah, your or basement get that, is get just that a candy land. There. I know. I know it yeah. is like a candy land of of home decor. Um, but here's here like you're just saying, like instead of buying more furniture because you don't like your style and putting it in, you you might be smart to take a lot out mm-hmm. because I think people put too much stuff in their house. Well, you know, and they think, if you why love- don't I like it? Well, edit it, edit, edit, edit. And can I just give you a little aha moment I had? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I just did a fall tour, a fall um, uh, house tour of the back of mm-hmm. our house, which is mm-hmm. our breakfast room that sits in the middle. Our um, uh, uh, family room is on one side and our kitchen's on the other. And I'm looking through these pictures and going, yeah, I'm not, I'm not loving this. I'm just not loving this. And I, and I, it just looked crowded to me and it looked, it just looked too much because it's so open and you have to, I mean, you are looking through like my entire kitchen, then my entire breakfast, up, then my entire family room. You're seeing all this all at one time. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. 
I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt yeah and so you know what i'm gonna do what i'm i'm gonna take down my open shelves <gasps> oh i am you know why i want to think about this the ones with the baskets in them no, the no, not no. Those are the built-ins. They yeah. stay. Okay. In my breakfast nook, remember, right. like a year ago, I had Bobby. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Ship lap the wall and built yes. the shelf. Bobby, and- don't listen. Have you don't told listen. Bobby uh, he's I'm- going to be dismantling something? <laughs> no, we're going to be going away on sort of a romantic weekend soon. And so I will tell you. You're going to bring it to him then? <laughs> yeah. She is so sneaky. Wow. I, I'm good. Hey, uh, this is why I've been married almost 35 years. Wow. Hey, no there's dis- some no there's no discord in this house. Yeah, there's-, there's there's the tip of the day. Why aren't you going ding 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 ding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's too much. Yeah. And I love how it looks, but it it is too cluttered. So believe yeah. it mm-hmm. or not, I'm gonna take them down. And it <gasps> breaks my heart. I love them. Yeah. I'm feeling a little wounded myself just thinking about that. Yeah. But well, you know, Anita what you're said it's- something earlier, which uh, I'm gonna try to jog her memory, but she's she had a little phrase. Don't be held hostage by your furniture. Oh, right. What a right. I mean, that's, that's, a good one. that's my yeah, but- ding ding of the day because mm-hmm. you know what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Remember that. Uh, I've discussed this before, that giant altar type of piece of furniture that was left behind by the gentleman who lived yes, here. Yes, yes. And you love it. Oh, I love it mm-hmm. in a vacuum. But okay. honestly, <laughs> last night I decided, or I love it in a cathedral, but yeah, last there you night- go. I decided. Now I had I've been away for a few days mm-hmm. and I came home and sometimes you see your house with fresh yes, eyes and yes, I walked in mm-hmm. and similar to what Yvonne is saying mm-hmm. I came in the door and I looked to the left through my living room and I thought mm-hmm. oh my goodness like it's a little, just a like little much. yes like did the home uh you know decorators <laughs> association <laughs> come in and put up everything that they had in the back room. Like mm-hmm. what happened in this mm-hmm. place? Mm-hmm. I, said, I can open a home goods. Like, you know, 
<laughs> Although a lot of the stuff Can is I real. Come? The real deal. Right? Really? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. But I looked through and I thought to myself, there is no way I'm going to make that piece of furniture work. And talk mm, about a heartbreak. It's heartbreaking. This, yes. And first yeah. of all, it is absolutely humongous. Well, oh. will it fit well in and your that's barn? the problem. You well, know, you just don't have barn? room. It's not even going to fit in the barn because I have another humongous thing oh. that I put together, but oh, we painted it white goodness. and it looks can, fantastic. Can and you thought, make it an outdoor something? Yes. I Well, here's the idea. I'll tell you a story. So last night I, I'm standing there and I should really be going to bed because I'm tired, but I'm looking at it and, I, and then I'm turning my head and I'm looking at it again. And I have these fabulous chairs that I got reupholstered that are unbelievable chairs, but they're kind of scrunched in there now. So you can't even oh, appreciate them. Mm-hmm. So, and Peter said, and he's very good at furniture placement, I have to say. Not the details, but the furniture placement. He's mm-hmm. like, it's got to go. And I was like, you know what, dude? You are right. It's got to go. But here's mm-hmm. the thing. I think I have to take a wall of the outside of the house off to get it out. <laughs> oh, oh okay. my goodness. Or break it apart and you don't yes. want to do that. So this morning, I got up early, early, early thinking about it again. And I think I can just take the the back section off, the mirrored section off, mm-hmm, and maybe mm-hmm. use that somewhere and just let them yeah. the bottom out. But this is so true. And when Anita said today, don't be held hostage by your mm-hmm. furniture, I was mm-hmm. being held hostage the whole other side of my living room. I don't even take pictures of. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. It's not. Now you it, know why. It's too much going on. And I was like, I'll just paint it white. But then I got that's just painting an albatross white. It's still yeah. an albatross. Yeah, you know, there's That's like painting a, that elephant white. Yeah. Exactly. It's that thing. It's that thing. You know mm-hmm. that thing in your house, that that part of your house that you don't really like. You know what you need to do, but you don't want to because you love it. Or no, you think I what just so bad. Start it's editing. It's a, Take it's it out. But I think we, we love home decor. We love furniture. So we buy all these things. Mm-hmm. And then we our house is overloaded. So my tip is like, so once you get your house in shape, the rule is, one thing comes in, one thing goes out. That's wow. the way it works in my house. Nothing comes in unless something See, goes and your out. How, the, I like, yeah, because your house has great um, seating arrangements and little areas. And my house has gotten to the point where like, okay, I'm looking through that open shelf and all I see is like dishes and white things and galvanized metal. And it's just too much, too yeah. much stuff. It can be too much. And it and isn't even furniture. Let's just call it too much stuff. Yeah. So I know you edit, all have made edit, fun of edit. me for saying this before, but there used to be that show where it was, des- I think it was called Design to Sell, and they would, on HGTV, and they would get a house ready to sell. One of the big things they did was move all this stuff out of the house. So on the, that's into little, the yard. <laughs> yeah, I'd get rid of it. Well, I yeah. guess, yeah, just out the door, but that's Didn't a, Oprah a do game. that tell you to get all your stuff and put it in the yard? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't watch TV. But anyway, so, but the thing I like to do is just play a little game with myself and pretend like I'm selling my house. And what would I take out if I were selling it? And if I would take it out to sell it, I need to take it out to live with it. Oh, because it's too much. Good point. Good good point. point. Okay. I have another furniture one. How Mm -hmm. about avoid placing all your furniture against the wall? Yes. Yes. You are not going to be inviting people over for line dancing anytime soon. <laughs> and you know what I think it looks like? It's like your furniture's backed up against the wall and somebody's going like holding them up. Back against exactly. the wall. Put your arms up. Well, isn't that what they did hostage. in colonial times? All the furniture went against the wall during the day and then they'd set it up. I mean, they'd use the same room for all these different things. Yeah. So they'd push everything against the wall. Then you'd put the so table in for meals. Well, I don't know, Anita. I'm, against- that, I'm not that old. I She's not know. been to Williamsburg. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. But you know what I'm saying? Everybody <laughs> like, oh, slide the f- sofa against the wall. And then no. you need like a megaphone mm-hmm. to talk to the person that's in the chair mm-hmm. that's against the wall. On the and then side. that rug is no more. way is that good rug going to work. <laughs> oh, no. Then you need more beach towels. <laughs> so... So avoid doing that. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Don't feel like, mm-hmm. you, you know, your furniture has to be holding onto the wall. Mm-hmm. It's okay if you bring it out from It'll the wall. It'll stand up on its own. It will stand up on its own. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. could even put a console table well, behind and when it you've or got something a like that. open concept house, you have to put stuff in the center of the room. Yes. There's no yes. way you can yes. put it all on the right. walls. It's just not going to work. Right. So you're going to strive to create uh, intimacy with your furniture and, and, and the people that will utilize it. And so Seating create groupings. That's right. And then what you can do, for example, in our house, we have an open concept. So the sofa is in the middle of Mm -hmm. the room. And so you're, when we're in the kitchen, we are looking at the back of the sofa. So the way I dressed it up, so you don't feel like you're 
you know, on the outside back looking is in. To you. Mm-hmm. It right. So I put a sofa table behind it and two chairs facing the kitchen. So there's no oh, back that was then. Smart. There's yes, the, the front. Yes. There's a front on God, both sides. You're mm-hmm. good at this. <laughs> good, uh, uh. Oh, stop it! I good. Woo. Okay. okay. I have another one. I have another one unless somebody else has one. Well, you go ahead. Go ahead. I'm on a I'll roll. Right after you. Okay. Yeah. How about She's if on a roll? How about if your drapes are too short? You're like, again, kind of the, wow, if I bought the, um, you know, what are they? The 84s instead of the oh, one whatever's. Mm-hmm. They're well, cheaper. and if you have and tall like, ceilings, you probably have this problem. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. or you move from one place to the other and you're like, I love these drapes. I paid a ton for these or I just love them. Okay. How about adding some trim to the bottom? Mm-hmm. Don't let mm-hmm. your drapes be flood High water, water. Pants, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the equivalent mm-hmm. thereof. So add some trim or even if it has to be a yeah, you lot, can add a ruffle. A ruffle, but you can even do a substantial amount of fabric and do like a color block thing or, you know, mm-hmm. kind of do a, a very um, – limited ombre, you know, you've got the one color and then just go to a little bit different shade. So it's not so shocking. Or, or, or you can take the curtains down, make gorgeous pillows with them and buy the proper size. Oh, mm-hmm. then you could do that as well. Uh, you know, that's, and lit- <laughs> sounds like sounds like she did that. I've done so that many so solutions. many times. I can't tell you. <laughs> so and recycling at its pillows. finest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it works. That's a good mm-hmm. one. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Okay, I do have one. Yeah, bring it. Don't be too matchy-matchy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether it be the um, color of woods you're using in a room, you know, your coffee table, your end tables, your sofa table. You don't want that to all match. And yeah, and if, maybe a few painted pieces, a few stained yes, pieces. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Don't use, you know, we, we like a limited color palette, but we like color variations within that. Use tons of texture, but, you know, just don't get into that matchy-matchy stuff. That just looks so tired. 
Oh, don't buy. Yes, no, don't buy sets right. of furniture. Oh, that okay. yes. All right. Do so they I do have, that anymore? Yes. Oh, I think people do. Sure, of oh, course they do. Yes. Okay, so I have one about paint. Mm. Because and you know when we talked about our biggest decorating blunders, I can't remember which early yeah, on. Yes. I, I think we all talked about a paint, a paint blunder. Problem. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, you know, especially if you're choosing a color for a wall that's not neutral, it's really not that unusual for you to pick a color that looks great and maybe even saw the swatch in the room, but you paint it on the wall and it looks very different. So I highly, highly recommend if you're going to change the color to paint it on a piece of wood, paste a cardboard, or just paint a big square on, on your the wall. wall. I agree. Before That's you the paint one to it. do. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you can get some, and it could look very different one room to another room because of the lighting. So, and, and in that can, way also, yes. Can I make the suggestion while you're mm-hmm. talking about painting it? Mm-hmm. Paint it on different walls in a room. Ah, because even true. they look so different. Yeah, that's true. Because I had two rooms exactly next to each other and the paint color looked very different in mm-hmm. one room versus the other. Mm-hmm. So you really need to, I mean, it just do it. It's going to save yourself a lot of heartache. And I, the Chime more neutral the color is, the least, the less of an issue it is going to, you know, the less worry I have mm-hmm. about it. But the more color, the more you really do need to check it out and just, just do it. You'll thank us later. Yes. Yes. We'll be here for you to thank us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thing is too much of a good thing. Now that can be, that can manifest itself in a lot of ways. Are you talking about my mother when her house was full of ducks in the seventies? You know the ones I'm talking about. Or gnomes. I do. Gnomes. We didn't do that. Too much of a good thing. Well, I was kind of thinking more in like you know, ch- chippy painting. Hummel. Oh, no, you're not allowed to say <laughs> hummel. I, I did that on purpose. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm going to have to talk about that dachshund again. Um, okay, the chippy <laughs> painting. You know, in fact, we did it during our readers, uh, or excuse me, listeners uh, episode when we did our 100th. Uh, somebody had written into us that she was like, she had discovered chalk paint. She couldn't stop herself. I think she oh, even like painted oh. her husband in chalk paint. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's, we said, take it easy, girlfriend, slow down mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. couple of pieces. You know, you don't want your whole room to look like, you know, a, a store that sells chippy painted chalk painted mm-hmm. distressed furniture, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I would shy away from, you know, I think they're, they have gone by the wayside. Like they're in the same category as the shag carpeting, but the fully distressed, uh, kitchen cabinets and all of that. Try to stay oh, away from yes. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's too much of a commitment. And, mm-hmm. ch- and, you know, quote, unquote, too much of a, quote, good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, add those trendy things in small, yeah. reversible mm-hmm. doses. A little bit of it. throws. Accessories. Yeah. Accessories. Best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even not, if it's not, not trendy. Yeah. Just not yeah. too much of one, you know, ducks, of course. I mean, uh, <laughs> we don't have to discuss that anymore. I think she still has a few of them. Well, a few. Who doesn't want a few good ducks in their house? Exactly. <laughs> but she doesn't listen to the podcast, so release we're good. the rest to the pond. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, I've got another one. Badly proportioned furniture in a room. Oh, you mean like those huge chairs, mm-hmm. or a huge you know the kind that don't fit through small- the door? Mm-hmm. Oh, huge mm-hmm. bed too. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know, I don't either. I don't have a good fix except see if they work in another room, but. You know, maybe maybe somebody else would love them. So take them to <laughs> mm-hmm. a, a, a like a secondhand store, you know, where you can sell it and get a little money for them. But I'm talking especially about a bedroom. Listen, if you can't get around your queen size bed really well, you know, maybe then you have to go down. I mean, I'd hate to tell you to go to a double, but you have to really watch like your what size bed you put into a room. Yeah, yeah, everyone mm-hmm. has to pay attention to mm-hmm. scale. And that's another Absolutely. reason why you should live in the place for a little while. And t- and so you can figure out what's going to be not only mm-hmm. the best things to yeah, make I you happy, but the best point. to function. So I had a friend who was building and she insisted on putting the sunroom on her house and it made the living room really uh, tiny. And I remember mm. saying, and she was, was uh, unhappy about that. And I said, well, why don't you take out that wall between the two rooms? And she said, because I want a sunroom. And she said, I'm going to have a sunroom. So I said, okay, I could tell it was like a real, you know, 
uh, something that she was passionate about. It was very, something she was very passionate mm-hmm. about. So I said, okay. So I could tell that I was just irritating her. So I shut up. <laughs> and guess what? 20 years later, she took the wall out. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh. So, you know, it's really, it, it does, it does make sense to kind of think it through how you're going to live there. And if you kind of, if things are not working out when you're designing the house, you know, maybe it's, you're not going to be happy with it later on. So really kind of put some thought into it. I have one, I guess maybe it's an overarching one as well. Um, don't wait for the warranty of things to run out before you think about replacing it. Like your big things like a roof, oh, your water heater, your water softener. Oh, those are so boring. I know they are, but you know, you don't want to wait till the 29th year on your 30 year old roof and say, oh gosh, now what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, start thinking about that before and really look at all the choices because I think you waste a lot of money and have more heartaches if you do not research something thoroughly. Well, especially if, if you have to do it in an emergency situation. Oh yeah. That's the worst. So that that's is, when, then, yeah. then, and they know that, like the roofer will be mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay, I can do it on Tuesday, but it'll cost you 10 grand more. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. I have one back inside and decorative is okay. um, <laughs> hanging art or hanging mirrors or anything like that. Now, it's really hard to say to every person of varying heights and ceiling varying heights and furniture varying heights, exactly what the right height should be. But Mm -hmm. when you're hanging something, I mean, it helps in my house because I'm 5'3 and 3 quarters and (laughs) Peter is 6'2. So, you know, we kind of find something in the middle all the time Mm -hmm. because we have a small person and a big person. But if Mm -hmm. if you're going to hang stuff by yourself and you're, you know, 5'2, you might want to take in consideration not only, you know, if it's a mirror, particularly somebody else using it, but how people would be able to see and enjoy your art. If it's too low, you're going to bring your whole room down. The eye is not going to go up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you're hanging it too high and you get yourself on a ladder and you hang it too high, it's just going to look weird because there'll be too much space between the furniture mm, and the art. And so, I think that's, you really, you really nailed it right there. And you have to be careful about the distances between the back of your furniture, if it's against a wall, and the height of your art. Speaking the, of those mm-hmm. mirrors yes, and, and the, the space height, between, mm-hmm. because yeah. we're different heights mm-hmm. too. I mean, I'm five, four and three quarters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then uh, Kevin is six, two. So, but here's the thing I used to have a round mirror in the bathroom. And what I found out is, that is just don't go with round mirrors in your bathroom. I'm just going to say it now because it's impossible. If you have a foot difference between people's mm-hmm. heights, you can't get it to work for both heights if it's round. Oh, good so, point. We have yeah, ovals. Yeah, so don't they work? Don't yeah. So just go ahead and go with oval or rectangular, just so you can you know so everybody mm-hmm. can see themselves mm-hmm. in the mirror. Girls, well, yeah. we came up with a lot of um, ideas and mistakes and. Um, and hopefully we've helped some people correct those mistakes. And so are we run out of time for today? So we want to re- um, tell you to remember we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey there. If you're loving our podcast like we're loving our podcast, we would love you to rate and review us. Head to iTunes to do that. It's easy and it would mean so much to us. And if you do rate and review us, we're going to enter you to win a fantastic giveaway. The details for the giveaway are in the show notes for this episode. And you can find the show notes at decoratingtipsandtricks.com.